Hi, Kaushik. So, uh, yeah, let's start the mock interview. And uh, so I'll firstly try to understand your uh, profile and then, yeah. uh, you know, you can give me a brief introduction and uh, we can go forward with the questions, right? So can you uh, just brief me about your past experience and uh, what is your, uh, you know, comfort zone in DevOps and what are you doing day to day? Yeah. Can you just give me an overview? Yeah, definitely. So, so for the past, I've been working on uh, DevOps and uh, cloud technologies. Uh, so what I've been working is like working on uh, cloud technologies like uh, AWS and Azure and also on uh, DevOps as well. Uh, so for Git, uh, I've been using for uh, uh, Jenkins for CI, CD and uh, AWS uh, code pipelines and as well as uh, Azure repos uh, okay. and also uh, Azure DevOps for uh, CI, CD management and uh, coming to containerization and orchestration, I've been using uh, Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, okay. So like, this is my uh, overview. Like uh, this is uh, like what I've been working on, and also like for uh, configuration management, I've been using uh, Ansible and as well as uh, uh, Terraform for uh, like uh, deploying the infrastructure. So yeah. Awesome. So I'll I'll try to keep this uh, interview questions as simple as possible to understand your uh, experience. The goal is yeah. not to confuse, but to uh, you know, understand what is your work experience and uh, how familiar are you with these tools, right? So, yeah. okay, as you told, uh, I would firstly like to understand, uh, can you tell me what is Git? So Git is basically for source code management. So like uh, you have some developers and uh, mm -hmm. uh, like we need to develop an application. Uh, so what we do with Git is like uh, you basically uh, check in the code and you have all the source code and we need a distributed centralized uh, version control system where we can actually track the code. Uh, so okay. so for that reason, uh, we, we use Git low. So for Git, uh, we have like several hosting platforms, like say okay. like Bitbucket, we have some like, something like Azure Repos or awesome. Code Commit or GitLab or GitHub. So so we use them as a platform uh, to actually commit the code and like for a centralized uh, system to track the changes. Uh, so that is when you use Git. So um, do you know if Git is a, centralized or a distributed version controlling system git is a distributed uh, version control system uh, yeah. awesome awesome so uh, because you have vast experience like you have experience with azure and you also have experience with uh, like you told that you know that uh, there are other hosting platforms like github right, right. so right. i would like to understand from you what is the difference between github and the azure repositories have you tried to understand the difference anytime yeah, I mean, like, uh, it, it's like, it's just like a, a hosting platform. Uh, it's just that uh, the user interface would vary. And uh, there are like a couple of features which would uh, vary from uh, GitHub to like, say, Azure repos. So uh, like, I mean, like, uh, it's almost the same. It's just that the platform is different. And you have much more better integrations with uh, Azure repos where you can easily integrate uh, it with uh, Azure DevOps. So it has that flexibility. Uh, so yeah, uh, so that is the main difference I can say. Okay, so can you integrate uh, Azure DevOps with a GitHub repository? Yeah, definitely. So so we have a concept called service connections where you actually provide the provider uh, and you you specify a service account and its details. Mm -hmm. You pass it in the service connections and uh, then uh, you can uh, have your uh, GitHub integrated to Azure DevOps. So in that case, uh, what do you see is the difference between? GitHub and Azure repositories because I can create a GitHub repository for free, right? I don't have to yeah. pay anything. Yeah, um, exactly. So, so yeah, I mean, like you have like you can create public repositories or like private uh, uh, yeah. repositories uh, for sure. But uh, for Azure repos, you need to have a subscription and you you need to have your own organization set up. So uh, exactly. it's it's like based on like you need to you need to make a payment for it. So Azure yeah. uh, for like uh, GitHub, you don't need to necessarily. So in your organization, are you using repos on GitHub or Azure? So we have used like multiple projects, like uh, so for one project, uh, for the project that I'm currently in uh, using, uh, I'm currently uh, using Azure repos uh, for uh, source management. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, so uh, do you use Git for your day-to-day -day activities or? Yeah, I do use uh, Git on like for a day-to-day -day activities, like awesome. not like really uh, complicated commands, but like okay. what what exactly is required uh, for for uh, for the code management. So, do you understand the difference between Git pull and Git fetch? 
yeah git pull uh, basically pulls all the contents uh, of uh, uh, repository whereas git fetch only fetches uh, what it, what exactly has been changed and uh, that will be the new uh, the new files and the new changes right yeah exactly awesome, pulls, awesome. Uh, yeah so uh, like i would like to understand uh, a complete ci cd flow of your organization how you are doing uh, ci cd yeah definitely i can go ahead so so i can have like several use cases like let me take one example uh, yeah. I, I would uh, taking uh, azure into consideration for now uh, so like uh, we use uh, azure devops for ci cd so what we what i have done in the past is like uh, i have created uh, release pipelines in azure devops where uh, i have integrated uh, azure repos uh, in, inside the pipeline and uh, for this we are using uh, docker and kubernetes uh, where for uh, microservice management so so we we containerize the application and uh, like uh, this is part of the release process uh, so like uh, we create images and we push these images to uh, azure container registry and once we have the images pushed to azure container registry uh, we fetch the images uh, as a part of cicd process and then we uh, use this kubernetes concept to uh, create a release pipeline and we create a deployment uh, manifest and uh, uh, basically fetch the image from the registry so, and uh, so, how we you, deploy. so how do you do that uh, deployment part like how do you fetch this uh, from the registry and how do you deploy so this is through kubernetes manifest file so we specify in the container image and also uh, we specify uh, the required parameters uh, we pass them inside the kubernetes manifest and uh, uh, as a part of this process uh, we include this in the release pipeline and uh, so uh, that is how the pipeline looks like so uh, do you prepare this uh, kubernetes manifest on the fly or do yep. you store it somewhere or how is it so this is like version control so as i mentioned earlier uh, we use uh, azure repos for uh, source code management so uh, we have all these files come checked into uh, uh, azure repos so from there we fetch this uh, deployment file okay so using some shell script or something do you modify the container image or the port if required for the deployment yaml file before you so deploy. i use visual studio code uh, to basically uh, update the images and uh, uh, so that is when uh, i have integrated uh, azure with uh, 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 for this visual studio code and that is how i check in the code to azure repos and uh, okay. and i create a release uh, based on the requirement or uh, based on uh, what we have scheduled awesome. uh, in the plane, so awesome yeah that's that's very good to know and uh, so coming to this uh, uh, Kubernetes, right? So mm -hmm. how do you uh, ensure that there is no downtime during your uh, application deployment? Yeah, definitely. So 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 I do perform like a rolling update. What exactly okay. it means is uh, making sure that we have at least uh, two replicas running on our uh, uh, on on our Kubernetes. Uh, so this this ensures that when you create a re uh, release, so then uh, one one pod goes down, and meantime the other pod uh, still stays uh, up, uh, updated with the new yeah. changes. So, so that is how uh, we do we do like a rolling update, which which will ensure that uh, the uh, application is up and running all the time. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, what is the difference between a, a deployment and a replica set? So, uh, re replica set uh, is uh, deployment is where you specify the number of replicas, and uh, replica set is kind of a different concept. Uh, so. So replica set, uh, I'm, I don't have on top of my mind, but uh, a replica yeah, set. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so you are performing this uh, as a rolling updates, right? The deployment. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, like, do you understand the concept of services in Kubernetes? Yeah, uh, I mean, like I do, uh, I do uh, work on different services. Like, so we have like a load balancer service, we can say, and also like uh, mm -hmm. node port and uh, also like cluster IP. So these are like the services that we uh, use, like based on uh, what exactly is required. So yeah, awesome, awesome. So yeah, you know about the different kinds of services. Yeah, right. makes sense. So uh, let us let us slightly uh, deep dive into this Kubernetes topics and. Um, yeah. So what are the Kubernetes, uh, I mean, you understand the Kubernetes control plane, right? So which, right. Kubernetes, uh, which Kubernetes control plane services uh, would deploy on the worker nodes? 
So, so basically, considering to master, we say like we have like a cube scheduler, cube controller, cube control manager, and as well as API server, which are like, and also like the HCD, which are part of uh, the Kubernetes uh, control plane, uh, like uh, the core components. And like for uh, Kubernetes nodes, I can say like we we have this cube uh, cube proxy and as well as cube uh, uh, CTL. Uh, so basically, these are like. Uh, uh, which we have on each node. So this is to perform uh, uh, pod operations and uh, uh, like manage the cluster operations on the node. Yeah, so basically uh, you forgot about kubelet. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Cube, yeah, kubelet, right, yeah. Kubelet uh, and kubectl is for uh, uh, command, line. command line interface, right? Yeah, so uh, can you, it's okay if you don't uh, completely understand, but uh, do you know how kubelet actually works? Uh, can you tell like, uh, if I'm creating a pod, let's assume that uh, I uh, give a request through command line, something like mm -hmm. kubectl apply pod.yaml. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you uh, Can you tell me on in a brief, like what actually happens? How is this request uh, processed from your kubectl, from your command line to the mm -hmm. deployment of the actual pod? Okay. So, so basically here, uh, the kube scheduler and kube controller comes into picture so what kube scheduler does is like oh, when we when we pass the requirements uh, it makes sure that uh, it will uh, have that required uh, uh, resources allocated onto a particular pod which which makes sure uh, that uh, it, it it deploys the right number of replicas onto that particular pod mm -hmm. and uh, in, inside the cluster uh, which is uh, so and uh, like kube controller uh, what it does is like it make sure that uh, it has the right number of uh, so so we have this concept called like uh, desired state and uh, yeah. uh, the current state so it yeah. makes sure that if, if if for some reason the pod goes down uh, maybe some uh, issues like uh, we can say like crash crash loop back of state uh, and the pod goes down and what it does is like it creates a new pod that is when uh, desired state it, it, sure. it looks for that state and that is how uh, the cube controller comes into picture and Kubelet, uh, cube, uh, cube CTL is how we we write in the commands. Uh, so just that uh, the, to fetch the logs, it 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 fetches the logs through this uh, master node. Uh, so what it does is like uh, uh, we use cube CTL, which which queries uh, the cube API server. So that is how the connection looks like. Uh, so yeah. So yeah. So, think, from, uh, so from cube CTL, it would actually go to the cube API server. Cube API server. Yeah. Then and it goes to cube the API server. Yeah. Yeah. So from the API server, it would go to the scheduler and from scheduler, it goes to the kubelet, right? Kubelet, And from there, it, it also goes to HCD as well. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, probably uh, sometimes uh, to some of the interviewers, you might have to explain that, you know, uh, when, yeah. when we are looking for more about kubelet, so probably you can say that uh, kubelet would talk to the container network interface. Right. The CNI. So yeah, we have the CNI and the CRE, right? Container, yeah, runtime yeah. environment. Container yeah. runtime environment. Yeah. So you need to say that it goes to the container runtime, and depending mm -hmm. on the container runtime, there is a container mm -hmm. runtime interface, and from there yeah. it would get deployed. Yeah. But you are good. I mean. Yeah, I mean, like I just wanted to give an overview. Yeah. So, exactly. so the, like, if we go in depth, it's like we have like container runtime environment, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, which basically manages this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. So, uh, do you understand the concept of ingress in Kubernetes? Yeah, uh, I do understand the concept of ingress. Uh, so, yeah. can which you tell me why is it required? The... Why ingress is required? So, uh, it is like similar to like uh, service type. It is a service type where mm -hmm. we directly need to like. Uh, so, we use like application gateway. So, it, it it doesn't need to actually communicate with uh, intermediate interfaces. Like we have, we can establish a direct connectivity. Uh, with your parts and uh, like for the external uh, applications, like uh, which is outside of your cluster. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so I think you are doing really well uh, on this specific things. I would like to like, you know, slightly jump on to uh, some advanced questions that I have. And uh, oh. yeah, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you know, you can ask me if there is any questions uh, regarding these things or not. So yeah. uh, because you already work on Docker, mm -hmm. right? So, do you know what is a uh, distroless Docker image? Uh, distroless Docker image? Uh, no. Actually. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, one more thing is, uh, have you ever worked on uh, multi-stage Docker deployments? Uh, 
Yeah, uh, I did work on multi-stage Docker deployment, where in like Kubernetes, we have like uh, the pod concept where uh, in each pod, like there are like multiple containers, uh, which is called like a sidecar container. Uh, so okay. I have worked on that as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no problem. And uh, so with respect to Kubernetes, uh, mm -hmm. do you know what is a custom resource definition? Yeah, uh, the CRD, right? So custom resource definition is like which you, so for one use case, which I can say is like for Helm, uh, there was one thing. Uh, so we have this uh, Redis, which we need to deploy. So what we use like uh, for, we use like custom resource definition uh, to uh, basically uh, pass inside the uh, Kubernetes file uh, for the Helm deployment, which which basically packages and makes it, it acts like a proxy. Uh, so. So where you can um, uh, actually manage the resources. So that is what uh, the CRD is actually. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, yeah. One last question that I have uh, is like, uh, do you know uh, what is an admission controller in Kubernetes? Uh, admission controller, uh, I knew, but I don't have yeah. one. Problem. That's okay, what I mean, it, yeah. It, it does also. Yeah, because we don't work on all the things. Yeah, sure. So basically, you know, uh, it's they're like similar to webhooks, where uh, you know probably you want to modify the behavior. You, are you aware of uh, service mesh? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah. aware of. It. So if you take example of service mesh, what happens when you deploy a, uh, you know, when you deploy service mesh? So it creates a sidecar container for your uh, actual container, right? In, inside that is when you use uh, sidecar containers. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, how this works uh, behind is that uh, Kubernetes has a concept called mutating webhook. So, you know, okay. uh, so whenever you create a request for the pod, so mm -hmm. the webhook gets triggered and uh, mm -hmm. it modifies the behavior of your pod and it creates two containers instead of your actual container that you're deploying. So uh, but, this is the concept of admission controllers. Yeah, that's okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, now you know it. So uh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Good yeah, time. I think uh, you have answered pretty well, and uh, that's all I have. Uh, it was very nice talking to you. And yeah, it uh, was nice talking to you as well, Abhishek. Yeah, got to know uh, about like a couple of concepts like the admission controller. Yeah. Uh, and also the replica sets as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.